my name is Charlie and welcome to my channel and welcome to today's video and today's video is as you can tell from the title predicting the women's prize long list as many of you guys will know I have been following the women's prize long list for the longest time and um, in fact I think about maybe seven years so the first time I remember reading it um, reading the winner was um, was Home Fire by Camilla Shamsi and I just adored that book but I had been like on and off like keeping my ears open about it before then as well but yeah I just love this prize I just love how it promotes um, female authors there's a fantastic judging panel this year as well we have on the panel we have um, Ayabami Adebayo um, whose book Stay With Me is one of my favourite books of like all time and we've got Laura Dockerell and Anna Whitehouse and Indira Varma who is I'm so excited for being a judge because she is a uh, going to be on the new Doctor Who this year I think she's going to be playing a villain she's going to be playing the Duchess so that like my geeky heart just goes into overdrive because you guys know I love Doctor Who and then obviously we've got the chair judge of Monica Ali so yeah it's just a fantastic judging panel so I have no doubt that the books they just that they pick is just going to be amazing and I'm so I'm so so excited and yeah, so I'm going to launch right into my predictions. I'm going to start with like most, like the book I'm sort of books I'm most sure of to the books like I'm less sort of confident in. The first book I've chosen to put on this list, The Fraud by Zadie Smith. I, Zadie Smith has got a lot of history with the Women's Prize. She's been listed multiple times before for her books. And um, I think she actually won one year, I believe. I think that's right. And this book that she's recently published, just I think it was like September last year, is a historical fiction and it's set in 1873 and we follow Eliza Touche, Miss, uh, Miss Eliza Touche, and she is interested in the Chichborn trials and it's like obviously following obviously the case of a potential fraud and it's um so and also I believe in this book Charles Dickens um, makes an appearance as an, and is a character so yeah, I just cannot not see this one being listed. I feel like it's out of all of my picks. I feel like I feel like I'm most sure of it, even though none of us really know any of the picks that we've chosen because obviously we're all guessing. But yeah, I feel like this could be listed. Very, I'm very, very, I'm, I'm fairly confident it will be listed. <laughs> the next book on um, my that I've chosen as um, as my predictions is Julia by Sandra Newman. I have listened to this one on audiobook recently. And I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a fantastic. Lots of you would have heard about this one. This is a 1984 retelling from the perspective of Julia. And it's just a really wonderful book. It's got um, loads more like feminist themes in with, within it. Um, it's obviously very brutal because it's cut because the subject matter that it's covering. But I just thought it was a really, really um, well done book. It was just a brilliant read and a very, very so I feel like the pacing is really, really good as well in it. Uh, so yeah, I definitely, I, I feel like this is another one I feel fairly confident will get listed. And I feel like if it does get listed, it will really sing and chime very well with the Women's Prize nonfiction because there's a book in it, or, that's listed, Wife Done by Anna Funda. Um, so yeah. The next book I've chosen is The Wren the Wren by Anne Enright. This is, um, it's cast on, um, on Zigzag. It says modern and contemporary fiction. And it says, family life, narrative theme, coming of age, love and relationships. These are all hashtags from um, my zigzag app. And it's got, um, the tagline is, Carmel has been alone all her life. She had been alone since she was 12 years old. The baby knew all this. They looked at each other, one life into another, and the baby knew exactly how alone her mother had been. And we follow the main character of Nell, I believe. Um, and it just... This book, I've heard a few people talk about it, but it just sounds, it sounds like the kind of book that I want to read, so therefore, and I just feel like it's quite women's prosy, potentially, so yeah, that's my pick for that. Then, um, the next book that I'm mentioning is one I've read and loved, and that is <laughs> Study for Obedience by Sarah Bernstein. This was listed for the um, Booker last year, and then longlisted and then shortlisted, so, and it also won, um, it won the Giller Prize last year. So maybe because of all the prize attention, it may not get listed. I am aware of that. But I just loved this book last year. So I loved it so, so much. It's sort of um, a bit sort of twisted. It's um, very stream of consciousness. I know loads of you would have heard me talk about it, so I'm not going to go on about it. But yeah, 
I really, really adore this book, so I really hope it gets listed. So, yeah, cross fingers for that one. <laughs> the next book I'm going to talk about is Come and Get It by Kylie Reid. I loved Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reid when I read it a few years ago, and as soon as I saw that Kylie Reid had got a new one coming out, I was just like all over it, and I'm so excited to get to it again, regardless whether it makes the long list or not. And the themes that are highlighted, it says narrative themes, love and relationships, coming of age again, social issues. So yeah, Kylie Reid is really good at talking about those um, themes. Um, and it says like the taglines are, everything comes at a price, but not, not everything can be paid for. It says Millie wants to graduate to get a job and buy a house. She's slowly saving up from her job on campus, but when a visiting professor offers her an unusual opportunity to make some extra money, she jumps at the chance. And it says it's sharp, intimate and provocative. Come and get it takes a look, takes a lens into us, our money obsessed society in a tension filled story about desire, consumption, consumption and bad behaviour. So again, these are all things I'm interested in. And I just feel like, again, this could, this has a, a strong chance of being listed um, for the women's prize. The next book I'm going to mention is uh, Land of Milk and Honey by C. Pam Zhang. As you can see, this is one I own and have actually read. This is, I loved the author's first book which was how much of these hills are is gold and i just adored that book so much and i really feel like this book is a little bit different this is like again again a, a little bit different and it's this is a book that's naturally outside my reading comfort zone so this is um dystopic and we, we follow and, and some people have said described it as utopic i don't i would still say dystopic personally um, but we yeah we follow our main character who is a chef by trade and she is invited so we're living in a world where basically there's there's been this like a smog has filled the land and basically there's very little food available to most the majority of people and she gets um invited uh, to a place where there is food and she becomes like a chef there or she's a chef there and then like it's very very weird and it sort of talks about desire and food. the way it sort of talks about food and desire and it's just like yeah it's a very unusual but <laughs> Zee Pan Lang is just such an amazing author like she just writes so beautifully and I feel like it's yeah it's just a stunning 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 book so I again I, this is one I cannot not see being listed and even if it is outside your reading comfort zone like it was mine I do recommend it so yeah, cross fingers for Land of Milk and Honey. <laughs> the next one I'm going to mention is another historical fiction. And this is one that, again, many people have mentioned on their list. I don't think anyone I've watched has not mentioned this book. So I feel like, again, this is another one that has got um, a lot of buzz around it at the moment. And again, that I feel like has a strong chance. And it's The Storm We Made by Vidit Nessa Chan. This is another historical fiction. Can you see which book type of books I naturally gravitate towards? The hashtags for it, like I said, are historical fiction, family fiction, war and combat, military adventure fiction. So it's set in Br the British Malaya in 1930s and also Japanese occupied Malaya in the 1945s, in 1945. Um, so yeah, obviously there's like, ta it's tackling um, issues of war etc in that in the country during that time I don't need to know much more than that I feel like um yeah it has a strong chance to be listed I'm very interested in reading it next book I'm going to mention is Soldier Sailor by Claire Kilroy this is one I'm so excited to read as I read all of these that I haven't read and um, this is an Irish author I for sure believe that we will have at least one book at least one book by an Irish author potentially more than that there are multiple books by female Irish authors that I'm interested in. Um, this is, I think it's like, uh, it's sort of set in the Troubles, I believe. Um, and it's following like a mother and a, a, a mother and child relationship. It's very brutal, it's very dark, it's very hard hitting, but it just sounds amazing. And I've heard nothing but praise for this book. So cross fingers that it makes it. So the next book that I am talking about is The Story of the Forest by Linda Grant. Linda Grant has definitely been listed um, for the Women's Prize and um, also uh, shortlisted, I believe. And how did she win again? I'm not sure, I can't remember. Um, so yeah, Linda, Linda Grant has got history of, history of the Women's Prize. So, and I've been wanting to read this since I heard about it from um, Bob the Booker's channel. 
from the flour mills of Latvia to Liverpool suburbia in post to, po to post war Soho. The story of the forest is about myths and memory and how families adapt in order to, to survive. It is a story full of wisdom, humour and wisdom that we have come to relish from this wonderful writer. So yeah, it just sounds, um, something about it sounds amazing and uh, Tessa Hadley, who um, is a very famous author, has blurbed it as saying an intelligent fa family saga, ambitious and moving and funny. The next book I'm going to talk about is a an author that has won the Women's Prize, but it's not one that I've seen on anyone's predictions. Um, Mrs. Gulliver by Valerie Martin. Valerie Martin, for those of you that don't know, wrote Property and won with that book. I'm for sure, for sure certain of that. And this is a book set in 1954. It's described as a dazzling drama filled with sex, wry wits and literary references. Mrs. Gulliver follows two women who have nothing to lose in their fight for agency on an island too ready to dismiss them. It sounds awesome. It's 100% of the one that I want to read. Um, yeah, everything about this just sounds very intriguing. So yeah, we shall see if it gets listed. The next book I've got listed is Evil Eye by Etaf Rum. This is described um, as a powerful no novel about motherhood belonging and culture and I've read and loved A Woman Is No Man by this author and so immediately as soon as I saw that she had a new book out I was like okay is it going to be is it eligible for the Women's Prize? Yes it is. This uh, is um, talking about a Palestinian family who have moved to Brooklyn I believe. This book just sounds really really interesting and obviously the, the themes within it are very current and relevant and, and that's another one that I'm interested in. The next book I'm going to talk about is one that I'm not even sure is actually eligible for this. I don't even know whether it's the um I don't even know whether it's fully been released in the UK or not. But you always there's always like it's like a booktube law that we always have to talk about one that potentially isn't eligible or potentially like we've got wrong. So I feel like this is the one that I feel like may be it, but either regardless I still want to talk about it because it's just a book that I am interested in regardless. Again, this is The Museum of F Failures um, by Thriti Amragar. I loved Honour by Thriti Amragar. And the premise of this, The Museum of Failures is a deep, deeply moving story of secrets and family and a reminder that forgiveness comes from realising that the people we love are usually trying to do their best in the most difficult situations. So yeah, it's, um, it's, it's a riveting story about uncovering family secrets and the power of forgiveness set in India and the United States. And I know that the author is amazing, as I said, and writes brilliantly, so if it's eligible, I hope it gets listed. The next book that I am going to talk about, I think has been mentioned on a few people's channels as well, this is Enter Ghost by Isabella Hamad. And this, again, is, I think, set in... Palestine again potentially um, it's uh, the hashtags on um, zigzag are modern and contemporary fiction general and literary sense of place displacement exile mir and, and migration um, and politics so yeah um, apparently we I think we follow a character who has left it says it's sort of she's left her homeland and returns and then I think she sort of gets involved in a play I think she gets involved in like Hamlet I believe like it's something to do with Hamlet in this book so um and again I think this is very going to potentially be a very hard hitting book but um one that's very important and I really feel like this has got a high chance of being listed even though it's getting it's quite low down my list but it, I do think it actually does have a strong chance of being listed the next book that I'm going to talk about is by an author who is a poet and um, by Joel Taylor. Uh, this is the, the Night Alphabet by Joel Taylor. I've read and loved um, the, the author's, um, one of the author's poetry collections and this book is a little bit again different on this list in the sense of I think we follow like a tattoo artist or two tattoo artists um, it says it's set across geographies and time spans. The Night Alphabet is a dazzlingly bold and original work, a deep investigation into human nature and violence against women. So yeah, I think it's like I said, it's set in a tattoo shop. It says a woman walks into a tattoo parlour, but this is no ordinary woman. And this is Hackney in 2233, also set in the future. 
and Jones's body is covered in tattoos, but she wants to add one final inkling in her, to her gallery, a thin mark of ink, a thin line of ink mixed with blood that connects her body art, creating a unique map. It sounds a little bit bizarre. I trust this author and I just think that this will be a really interesting pick for the Women's Prize if it does get listed. Right, the next book that I'm going to talk about is by an author again whose book, I, the first book, debut book, book by her I loved. This book is Hidden Fires by Suresh Hussain and so this book again it says the, the hashtags for it are family, like family fiction obviously, a generational um, saga, coming of age, historical fiction. This is um, an exquisite book exploring the secrets of vul and vulnerabilities and tremendous bonds between three generations of family. It says, Ramadan 2017, Yusuf wakes in the middle of the night to pray. His routine is always the same, but something tells him that tonight is going to be different. Yellow flames blur Yusuf's vision and the laughter of a small child echoes in his ears, but this time the red smoke filled skies aren't just his memory. That's all I need to know. Sign me up. I really am interested in this book. So the next book is Playing Games by Huma Qureshi. This is one I've read and loved. <laughs> and we follow two sisters, Hannah and Mira. Hannah has got like a seemingly perfect life, you know, seemingly perfect marriage. And Mira is a sort of struggling writer. She's working in a cafe and it's sort of about their relationship as sisters. And um, one night, <laughs> Mira overhears a, con a conversation between Hannah and her husband and it's about the sort of consequences of what happens from there. I don't want to spoil it too much but this is just such a really well done book. Yeah it is a contemporary book so I don't know whether um, it sort of will get listed or not but Hima Qureshi is an amazing obviously amazing author and I feel like the, the themes with, that are tackled within this are strong enough that I think it could be in with the shot of being listed so I'm kind of crossing my fingers that it will be and um, yeah so yeah and regardless if it doesn't you need to read this book it's an amazing book yeah the next book we put it is called Bird Life by Anna Smail and this is sort of my sort of wackier choice I feel like this could be the pod of the um of the list if it gets picked because I feel like it could divide readers because there's an element of magical realism within this book. We follow two women in this story. We follow Dinah and Yusuko. It's set um, in Japan. Both these women have encountered trauma in their lives and it's sort of how they deal with it. But Yusuko, when she was 13, she started being able to hear animals and they like started speaking to her. So it's it's sort of... <laughs> so it's sort of to do with that and um, it says as these two women deal with um, their individual traumas they form an unlikely friendship and in, in each will it will help the other to see a different possible world a snail teases out the tension between internal and external lives and asks us what we have to lose by choosing between them so yeah it's a little bit unusual um, and I don't think it will be one that necessarily everyone loves but I just I think, I, I feel like it could get listed. So that's like my sort of more wacky choice. So those are all the picks that I have chosen. For those of you counting might have noticed I put 17 on there, but I just could not pick between them. Let me know what your predictions are. Also, a little bit of admin, we will be, the plod along is, is obviously back um, with a vengeance. And um, myself, Jem and Alice will be here on Sunday. So we've got a live show with, of two amazing guests. We've got Amelia from Amelia Barlow Books and Olive from A Book Olive and they will be chatting to us at 3pm GMT over on Alice's channel. Links in the description. We are so excited um, for the pod along being back and chatting with you guys again and yeah it's just going to be fun as always. So yeah I hope you lots of you can join us. And let me know your predictions for the Women's Prize for Fiction long list in the comments. I'd love to hear from you which books you want to be listed, which books you hope never get listed, etc, etc, etc. Can't wait to, to talk to you all about it. So yeah, speak to you soon. Sending you lots of love. Goodbye!
and you Morning coffee and you Morning coffee and you